Ephesians 5 5 says that the sexually immoral will have no place in the kingdom of God. Yet later, Ephesians says we're saved through grace, through faith. Is this contradicting? So, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm going to tell you, I don't think it's contradicting. Um, let's read Ephesians 5 5. Uh, for you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Yeah, but weren't a lot of the Ephesians in the church, weren't they, didn't they do that stuff? He says, let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not become partakers with them. For at one time you were darkness. Now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true, and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. This is speaking in the sense of like gossipy, uh, where, where you where you vicariously enjoy it by talking about it, I think. Um, but when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that is becomes visible is light. Um, so how do you reconcile this with how you're saved? By grace. You, you reconcile it by saying, look, even if you're a sexually immoral person, you are not saved by stopping your sexual immorality. But if you are saved, you are indwelt with the spirit and God does a work in your heart. You have genuine belief in Jesus, a real attitude for his lordship and a work of the Holy Spirit in your heart. You're not going to just continue in the same sin to the same degrees. Um, another verse is 1 Corinthians 6, where he talks about the same list. This list of people will not inherit the kingdom. And he says, such were some of you past tense. I think that my, my own understanding of this theologically is this. For, for you to consider. Um, th th consider two clear categories and then two fuzzy categories of people. A Christian who's clearly a Christian. As far as you can tell, you have real strong reason to believe they're Christians. An unsaved person who's clearly unsaved. Okay, you've, you've got them. Then you have the, these other categories where you've got like a person who um, claims to be a Christian, but they're really not saved. And then there's a person who claims to be a Christian, they're, they're saved, but you but you can barely tell, right? Like it, they're, they're in that fuzzy zone. And you have these groups of people who you go, are you the unsaved person who pretends to be Christian? Or are you the saved person who just has a lot of compromise, but you're still going to be saved? I don't know how to unfuzzy these two groups, personally. I know there's warnings towards them. I know there's warnings towards them. Hey, if you're living these lifestyles, you're, you're not going to inherit the kingdom. But how do I know how much sin is so much where I go, you're clearly not saved. Now, am I saying that your your sin made you unsaved? No, I'm saying your sin reveals that your claim to believe in Jesus is not genuine. You don't have real faith. But how do I know, like, where exactly, where's the exact moment where I go, one less issue of sin, you'd be saved. One more, you're not. Like, I don't know this. You don't know this. We don't know this. So there's this fuzzy zone where Paul just warns people. He goes, hey, look, if you're in this zone, like you're in the scary zone, get over here where your life is clearly in Christ because you're scaring me. Um, this doesn't mean I go around saying you're saved, you're unsaved. Um, look, if you reject Jesus, you're unsaved. If you embrace Jesus and your life appears generally consistent with the gospel of Christ, I would be like, I'm, I feel confident you're saved. But if you're in that zone where it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be hopeful. I hope you're saved. I just don't know because I have these warnings in scripture and I'm not sure how they apply to you. That is a unsettling reality. Um, a lot of pastors feel compelled to tell everybody who's even remotely in this group that they're all saved. And this is very heartwarming and I feel the compulsion. I want to tell you that, but I don't think it's biblically true. I think it's okay to be a little scared sometimes because your lifestyle is contradicting your claims of faith and go, yeah, I need to get serious about Jesus. If that's you and you're listening, then, it, then the the answer is not to grow despondent or depressed and not to be all woe is me. Those are all the bad things that got you into this situation. The answer is to turn your faith and trust in Christ genuinely and to, sh and to really have an attitude of repentance and pray God help me have a real attitude of repentance here and then bear, the, bear fruit that shows that that was genuine. And that's the only solution is turning your life and focusing on Jesus. It's not abandoned. Well, I just give up then. Like, this is what got you into this mess, that kind of thinking. You need to 
come to light. That's the only solution.